Majora's Mask is honestly one of my introductions to gaming and my introduction to very deep and interesting storytelling and um, also like a darker, creepier side of video games that I hadn't experienced at that point since I was so young and I think just kind of just planted the seed for how my love of creepier and spookier games would grow over my lifetime so far. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Ashley Urbato and today I'm going to be talking about what Majora's Mask means to me and I'm just going to give you a spoiler, it's a whole lot. My first impressions of Majora's Mask uh, were very odd. I feel like I was very young when I started playing Majora's Mask. I was about four years old. So the first thing I really noticed was just how cool and uh, vast the world seemed. Um, even though you start out and just just clock town and you have to work your way to get out. Um, I managed to play on my grandfather's save file. So I immediately had access to the world and the masks. So. My first impressions were just wonder, like just being able to transform into different creatures and just like the eerie vibes that those transformation scenes had and just the eeriness of the different areas. Like I think even as a kid, I could just tell that even though I didn't fully understand, I just felt like there was something wrong you know? And while it wasn't super apparent that it was literally a doomsday scenario, I just felt off and I really enjoyed it and I enjoyed trying to help. Majora's Mask came at a super significant time in my life because I feel like once I hit about four to six years old, that's when my grandfather really started just introducing me to a bunch of games. I played Tomb Raider, I played Ocarina of Time, and I played Majora's Mask. Those were like my first few games that I played. So just being able to be given a Nintendo 64 controller and just being let loose into Termina really helped. Like, like I said earlier, so the seed of what uh, gaming is and how cool gaming can be and how cool stories in gaming can be. And it really, really was super, super important in honestly paving uh, the, one of the first uh, flagstones for my whole life and how gaming has literally changed my life. And I, it's so, so important to me always. And I hold it so near and dear to my heart. I feel like it really clicked when I was older. Um, I think when I was in my early teens and I went to play Majora's Mask and I, I fully, I, at this point, recognized the doomsday scenario, recognized everything, and I started looking a lot deeper into the lore of Majora's Mask and seeing the different subplots and actually actively going to like collect all of the masks and everything. And just being able to see all these side quests and stories that weren't like necessary to beat the game, but oh, like definitely fleshed it out a whole lot more. As soon as I just saw how deep and rich the lore was, I just completely solidified itself in my heart. I love lore, I love storytelling, and I love more like somber, creepy storytelling. So being able to just see 
um, a game that you wouldn't necessarily know all these storylines if you didn't actively pursue them. Just that cool underlying stuff that the game developers wrote in that you can discover is really awesome. And the fact that it's so off beat from the rest of Nintendo's like repertoire, like the creepiness isn't very common with Nintendo. And I love that. I love that it's just completely out of left field. All of a sudden there's just this horrifying, terrible, sad story that they made. And it's just so, so wonderful. I love it endlessly. And I think it's so cool that they just, I don't, I don't know if it was a risk at the time, but it feels now looking back that it must have been a risk they took to just really throw that out there after Ocarina of Time, which I think wasn't the most dark. It was a little bit depressing, but it's just super cool. And I, I just love that. And when I discovered just how deep Majora's Mask was, it really just was fantastic. My favorite thing about the game is probably the soundtrack. I feel like listening to the soundtrack of Majora's Mask, no matter what like vibe each song has, like there's always something deeper. Like even if it's really happy or anything, you can always just feel somber underneath it. Like they wrote into the music that there's like that overlay of like happy things are good things are super awesome we're acting like everything's fine everything's totally fine nothing's gonna happen but underneath there's like that music and it's very apparent in clock town as the days progress it obviously like builds every day it changes which i think is beautiful because it's just like that growing sense of dread that everybody feels in clock town it's in a lot of the other music as well it's just a lot more subtle but I think the music and everything the way it progresses through the days it's just absolutely mwah, one whole chef's kiss because it's incredible and I find myself listening to the Majora's Mask soundtrack all of the time and I feel like that won't ever change because I think it's a masterpiece If I were to try to get a friend of mine to play this game, I would literally just say it's a really beautiful Zelda game that has very rich, deep, and sad and creepy storytelling. So if you really like creepy stuff that's also got the Nintendo charm, it's definitely for you. That's what Majora's Mask means to me. Thank you so much for listening.